man. Um, so yeah, the good news is one more talk and then we, we get to have refreshments. That's one piece of good news. The other piece of good news is that this talk, this talk is going to be awesome. So um, we got Oren Gershon, who's the uh, Israel AIPG Intel manager, going to talk about some seriously geeky stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you guys in suspense, but please own the stage. Good luck, man. Here it is. Here's the thingy. Good luck. Okay. Good morning, everybody. So uh, good to see very familiar faces here in the crowd. Um, my name is Oren Gershon, and I'm managing AIPG in Israel. Uh, what I want to talk about today actually are three things. One of them is that AI is probably the biggest revolution we'll see in our professional lifetime, and I'll show a few examples. The second one is that Intel has a very strong and evolving portfolio of products for AI. And the last one is that Intel Israel is actually in the center of all this activity, and I'll show you examples in a second. So uh, we have seen a lot of examples with previous talks about the fact that AI actually is doing a better job than humans in many aspects. And all of these specific examples here on the slides actually are uh, proven with articles. You have the link below uh, that shows that we are uh, doing with AI better on uh, uh, medical uh, tumor detection, on oil and gas search, on uh, uh, text analytics, voice assistance, and so on. Um, AI is actually transformative to all industries. So there is a long list of all the industries here and all the verticals that all of us actually are working for, but it's actually a bit more fundamental than this slide. This is actually fundamental in a level that economy is changing. And actually AIPG managers are being called upon by governments in different places in the world in order to consult on what to do with this revolution. Um, Every company now is making significant changes and improving the way they work using AI. And Intel itself even is an example. Actually, there is a talk later today by my colleague Itai Yogev to talk about what Intel is doing internally uh, with AI. But there is no vertical that will get untouched. Intel has a very strong uh, portfolio of products, and some of them are very well and known and familiar, and some of them are new, and I'll touch all of them. Uh, I would like to start with the bottom, though. The bottom are the products. Eventually, Intel is a silicon company, and this is what you see from us. All of you, I assume here, are using a Xeon this way or the other, and we'll talk about Xeon in a second. There is a new Nirvana product that I'll share the details with you in a second. And there are the uh, FPGAs and other products. A few newcomers actually are dedicated products for edge devices, and they are based on acquisitions that Intel has made in the recent years. Uh, the most famous Israeli one, obviously, is Mobileye, uh, which is for the automotive business, and everybody here, I would guess, are quite aware of it. Uh, the other one is Movidius. It's actually a much smaller device. It's for edge devices, and it's actually used in uh, smart camera and smart devices at the edge, and it does include the AI components in, in inside as well as the Mobileye one. There is the Intel GPU, which is being used even by companies like Amazon to do some... Uh, uh, computer vision based on uh, software that was developed here in Israel. Uh, and obviously the rest of the products that you all know and familiar with from the uh, PC business. All of that is being driven by software. So uh, what Intel is doing is actually uh, hooking up to all these frameworks that all the developers are using, TensorFlow, Cafe, and so on, and creating sort of a funnel where all these are connected to a single framework that can eventually emit code to all these uh, different uh, products that Intel is doing. Um, above there are tools and frameworks I will not touch, uh, sorry, and uh, a platform that I will not touch upon, but actually some of them are being developed uh, here in Israel. So let's talk specifically about uh, uh, Xeon. Xeon uh, got uh, quite improving uh, results in recent months. Uh, Intel made a major investment both in new instructions in the Xeon itself, but mainly on software improvement to create unparalleled improvement. I haven't seen that many uh, uh, jumps in my uh, lifetime. We're talking about 200x performance on the inference and 127x on training. And the reason is uh, most of these frameworks and the way we actually develop those we're using scripting languages that were not very efficient, so Python and so on. And Intel made a conscious decision and investment in recent uh, year 
to go and fix that and actually create a highly optimized code. So if you already have um, a data center, you already have investment in cloud and servers, you not necessarily uh, have to jump immediately uh, to buy expensive GPUs. Actually, you can do quite a lot with the Xeon, and I do encourage you to go ahead and test uh, some of these claims yourself. It's actually quite impressive. Uh, but that's Xeon, and uh, we're all using and familiar with Xeon, but there is also uh, newcomers. So um, this is a new product by Intel. It's called Neural Network Processor. It's actually based on a Nirvana technology. It's a company Intel acquired a few years ago. And it's uh, very impressive. This is the first, as far as I know, uh, AI from the ground up. That is, we uh, built a product that is doing only AI. This is not a GPU. If you look at the back, there is no connector to HDMI or something of that nature. This is actually built for one purpose only, to do efficient training of deep learning networks. It's uh, actually a very strong device. Um, it's massively parallel. It has many of those uh, uh, MPUs, the uh, computing units internally, and um, <clears throat> 30 megabytes of uh, internal memory, high bandwidth memory chips that you can see on the top and on the sides, the four of them. Uh, massive parallelism uh, that includes also ability to have these chips side by side, up to four of them, and connect them together to a single uh, card. And it has all these uh, managed data flow and ability from the software perspective to manage where the data goes, which is actually very important. But talking about slides is a bit boring, actually. So I have a surprise for you all. For the first time in the world, uh, we have a pure AI product from Intel. This is the Intel, thank you. This is the uh, Intel Nirvana Neural Network chip. It was built from the ground up as an AI chip. If you look at it, well, obviously a lot of cooling from the side, but as I said earlier, no HDMI ports or something of that sort. This is not a gaming device. This is AI device. And uh, I got the permission to show it to you. This is the first time in the world we see the actual uh, product and not the uh, bare chip. Um, it's not formally announced by Intel yet. Formal announcement will be made in the coming weeks, so stay tuned. But I got special permission due to our involvement in this product to uh, show you some of it. So, thank you. Oh, by the way, it will be available for uh, touching if you're actually interested in the booth that we have uh, later on. It's a pretty impressive piece of equipment. Okay, so that was the exciting part. So this is training. So actually, we're building accelerators that are specifically for training purposes. And the question is, what about inference? So when we consider inference, inference is very different than training. Training is based on massive parallelism of huge bed sizes in order to do all these epochs again and again in order to get the, our network trained. When we talk about inference, acceleration, it's a very different story. First of all, uh, you need to balance between latency, the speed, and the bandwidth. That is, in some applications like speech recognition, you want to be able to respond extremely fast to a customer that's actually talking to your device like an echo. Uh, on the other hand, you may be indexing images in uh, Facebook or something of that nature, and you have millions of images to consume on an hourly basis. When you talk about acceleration, uh, you're actually usually plugged near uh, a Xeon CPU, which has its own capacity. But uh, you want to make sure that when you do the acceleration, you're not moving data quite uh, often, because moving data often is a killer to performance. So you want to create accelerators that actually can take a whole network and execute the network end to end, and then re re return with an answer. So uh, it needs to have an efficient network processing, which means that it has to have not just extensive deep learning acceleration engines, but also ability to program it. This is a very evolving field. We need to be able to move with the industry, move with the development, and everything we fixed in stone, in our case, silicon, uh, potentially is not good enough, and new software will show up. So in order to build such accelerators, 
At the bottom, you'll do obviously the deep learning acceleration, which looks very much like we do in training. But you need to have various level of uh, optimizations between performance and programmability in order to be able to have the whole deep learning running uh, on the device. Um, and not Im more important, actually, is the graph compilation. The ability to actually compile the code and have it optimized is obviously a key uh, to utilize uh, all these engines that you have on the accelerator. Um, so we're building accelerators. We're building dedicated accelerators. And we want to take a step back and think, what actually are we doing here? Uh, because uh, we are moving away from using general purpose machines like Xeon and GPUs to some extent, and building custom, custom solutions for AI. So for the silicon industry, this is not the first time that we are actually doing this shift. If you look at this graph, it's actually uh, showing trends that we had in the industry in different decades. And it's uh, obviously uh, quite long time. But what happened is we moved between two ends. On the uh, lower end, we're doing customization. A new application showing up, it requires a lot of compute that we don't have on the normal devices, and therefore we, do, we build accelerators. And on the other hand, uh, we're going into standardization. Things actually look more stable. We have time. The industry took the time. IEEE sat down. We have a standard, and now everybody is shooting for that standard. And that enables actually uh, economy of scale. It allows us to port software easily. It allows us to develop uh, these uh, algorithms uh, much more easily. So I'll look just at the end of it. And uh, the dot is where we are today. <clears throat> so graphic, I'm starting in the middle here. Graphics uh, started by the fact that we had standard and floating point. Obviously, graphics is very heavy on floating point, And the fact that there was standardization and there was the back then 287, 387, and later integration, allow us the beginning of graphics. But it wasn't good enough. After we had graphics, we needed much more in order to get re to uh, realistic uh, scenes in games. So uh, what happened is that people started to build graphics cards. But these graphic cards were unique. Some of you still may remember there were games that worked only on specific types of graphics engines, but not on the other, because it, there was no standard for that, sorry. <clears throat> Uh, and what happened is that in the 90s, there were standards evolving that allow that code to be more portable. But it also opened the graphic engine as a GPGPU. It allows general purpose computing to be done on graphics. And now PhDs around the world could actually have a small supercomputer on their workstations. And when that happened, one of them was Alex. Alex from AlexNet. So what Alex did is actually training his first neural network, the famous one, uh, on GPU, actually two of them, and uh, opened the door for all of us in this revolution of uh, deep learning AI. So uh, we are maximizing what these devices can do, the general purpose devices. And now we are building accelerators. Intel, the rest of the industry, are shooting for AI dedicated and customized accelerator. But you can assure you that over time, like we've seen before, it will move into a more standard version of everything. And uh, Intel is in the center of that. So we are building Accelerator, but we have actually the horizon in mind. And we are looking into pushing it from customization uh, into standardization over time. Last but not least, understanding AI means that we need to do things from the top, not just from the bottom. So in Intel Israel, what we're doing is we're actually having a research, algorithmic research, that is actually participating in the activity in the open source community, uh, specifically around reinforcement learning. It's a system that allows you, on one hand, to look into all the different reinforcement algorithms, and on the other hand, uh, be able to connect to all these simulators that allow you to practice agents and see the results. Uh, the one in the middle is actually interesting. It's an open source autonomous driving simulator, which is based on a game engine that Intel developed. Another example is natural language processing, probably the number one application right now for our uh, customers and the cloud service providers. Uh, and we have uh, NLP research going on as well, and we have actually very good results. So to summarize, 
AI is obviously the biggest computing revolution we've seen for a while now. <clears throat> and uh, Intel has a very strong portfolio of products uh, from all the way from the uh, uh, research to the hardware to the software and to the solutions. And definitely uh, Intel Israel. Intel Israel is a key uh, in that. We are participating in the algorithms that are driving this uh, neural network processor. Uh, and we are building uh, other accelerators. There is Mobileye in Israel and the Xeon itself. The cores that are actually inside the Xeon are developed and enhanced in Israel for AI. Thank you very much.